G'day guys and gal, for being such a large, powerful faction that was more or less constantly at war with all other factions simultaneously, the leaders of the Imperium aren't very good. Sure, they are smart and powerful, but they are also unbelievably selfish, unreasonable, and corrupted. In the traditional sense, not the chaosy sense, there have been multiple coups and many civil wars due to the occasional High Lord getting too big for his boots, killing the others, taking control, and then either the Space Marines or Custodians have to come in and kill their ass to restore order. But regardless of their incompetence, the High Lords are an interesting bunch, each representing a key aspect of the Imperium, and that is worth talking about. Before we get started, we all know Manscaped is at the forefront of men's grooming and hygiene, something that really shouldn't be ignored by us Warhammer fans, whether it be their pube-destroying lawnmower or their neckbeard eviscerating Plow 2.0 or Handyman. But why worry about the individual products when you can get the new and improved performance Package 5 Ultra, featuring the new Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra, the one stop shop for men's grooming, featuring a new skin safe attachment, 60 minutes of battery life, a USB C charger, cooler LED lights, as well as all the other awesome features we have grown to love, like it being waterproof, hence shower friendly. The package also features the Weed Whacker 2.0 to keep those nose and ear hairs trimmed, as well as the Crop Preserver to eliminate stanky wiener, as well as an aftershave lotion to ensure that rashes or bumps won't occur. I mean, they probably won't occur anyway due to the skin safe technology, but this is like double good. To top it off, the package also comes with a free pair of comfy ass boxes and a sleek toiletries bag. The best part is that not only are you saving 45% when you get this package over the individual items, but you will then get an additional 20% off and free shipping when you use my link and code MageKill below. Cheers to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Today we'll go over the High Lords, including what position each High Lord holds, what sub-factions are represented, what authority they have or had, as well as some of the notable High Lords and the current High Lords and how Gilliman's return has changed their role. Also, once again, shout out to my amazing artist, Alex Christie, for the thumbnail art for this video. Full res version is free to view and download on my Patreon. Now let's get into it. The Emperor never wanted mankind to be ruled by gene-enhanced demigod super soldiers. The Primarchs, Space Marines, Custodes, and even him were a necessary tool to grant mankind its dominance and freedom from fear of annihilation or enslavement. However, he fully intended for normal humans to govern themselves as soon as the galaxy was free of threats, which is evident by him allowing Malkador to basically run the Imperium and establish the Council of Terror towards the tail end of the Great Crusade. It was actually this desire that turned so many legions against the Emperor, as they believed it was their right to rule the galaxy, that they bled to dominate. To some Primarchs, the idea of handing over the keys to their empires to mere mortals, people who hadn't bled a drop during the crusade, was appalling. But let's go back to their origins. When the Emperor formed the Imperium in its true form, he had a small council of advisors called the War Council. It featured the fabricated General of Mars, the leader of the Navigator Houses, and Malkador the Sigilite. He made this council as without Mars or the Navigator Houses, there would be no Great Crusader Imperium. Malkador was there because the Emperor loves his bro Mal. As the Crusade really kicks off and the Emperor began discovering his Primarch sons, he and his newfound demigods were the new de facto rulers of the Imperium, as all that was required was conquest. However, as the Imperium grew and the boring administrative shit, like collecting taxes, was required, the conquerors began losing their influence and authority, with Malkador stepping up as Imperial Regent and basically running the show whilst the Emperor fought battles or planned his next move, like the creation of the Eldar Webway. As such, the Emperor and Malkador formed the Council of Terra, not a small small gathering of High Lords, but a grand council of thousands of administrative civilians from all aspects of governance. To be honest, the Primarch should have been pretty stoked. They could continue to focus on the conquering, not the boring accounting shit. Horus was still in command of the Imperium's militaries after all. However, when the Council of Terra started requesting Horus to help them with stuff, like allowing planets he had recently taken to start getting taxed, he got pissed off. As we got closer to the heresy, the council again evolved. There was now a grand council, featuring leaders of the most important wings of the Imperium, with the other normal councils still existing and having thousands of other bureaucrats. This Grand Council featured Malkador as the Regent, the Fabricator General of Mars, the Captain General of the Custodian Guard, which was Constantine at the time, then we also had the Astra Telepathica, the Administratum, the Navigator Houses, two commanders of the Imperial Army, the Adeptus Arbites, the Astronomicon, the Pharmaceutical Companies, because of course Big Pharma is there, as well as the Estate Imperium, the Chartist Captains, and the Imperial Chancellery were all represented. Don't ask me exactly what each of those wings were, I'm not entirely sure, and this Grand Council didn't last that long anyway, since when the 
Al-Haris heresy broke out, the Loyalist commanders took control of the war effort and basically just ignored most of the Grand Council anyways. By the end of the heresy, the Loyalist Primarchs were running everything as they tore the trash that was the traitors from the Emperor's realms and banished them to the Eye of Terror. The Emperor was a vegetable and Malkador was now a pile of dust, so the Grand Council was more or less just dissolved, mainly through no one giving a fuck about them anymore. However, as the dust settled, Gilliman decided that they couldn't just focus on vengeance all the time, so he reformed the Council of Terror and put himself as its leader, the Lord Commander of the Imperium, who was in charge of the Imperium's armies and also oversaw the Council. The Council of Terror was set to 12 members and was renamed the Senatorum Imperialis of the High Lords, which is the same thing as saying just the High Lords of Terror. Now this might seem like a blatant power grab by Gilliman, but honestly he was the only one suited to the task. Rogel Dorn, the previous Lord Commander, handed over the role to Gilliman, whilst no other Prime Mark objected to the dude that loves administrating shit becoming the Lord of Administration. There were nine permanent positions, roles within the Imperium that were deemed completely necessary, with the three remaining positions being open to various other sub-factions within the Imperium who could try and get on the High Lord's table if their sub-faction was particularly influential at the time. The nine permanent positions were the Master of the Adeptus Administratum, for obvious reasons, a representative of the Inquisition because they are a nosy bunch, the Ecclesiarch of the Adeptus Ministorum which only became a permanent position due to the rise of the Imperial cult centuries after the last of the Loyalist Primarchs vanished, the Grand Provost Marshal of the Adeptus Arbites, which is basically the Supreme Court but given to a single person, the Paternoval Envoy of the Navigators, as Navigators are still important as fuck, the Master of the Astronomicon, as what's the point in having Navigators if they can't see shit, the Fabricator General of Mars, because pew pew, the Grand Master of the Officio Assassinorum, because people are probably too scared to try kick him off, and then the Master of the Adeptus Astrotelepathica, because in an intergalactic empire, being able to make psychic phone calls is pretty fucking important. Those are the nine permanent seats. Obviously the actual person who is in that role changes as they die, but the seats themselves remain. The Inquisition seat often has a different person on it, as the Inquisition has no totally unified leadership, and their leaders would be too busy anyways. Sometimes it's even a Grey Knight that acts as the Inquisitorial representative. Now for the three remaining seats, there are actually nine sub-factions who constantly vie to take them. The first is the Lord Commander of Segmentum Solar basically a mini warmaster who commands the imperial armies of the main segmentum of the galaxy. Then there's the Lord Commander Militant of the Astra Militarum, the highest ranking person in the imperial army, however due to how much politicking and bureaucracy there is at that level, he leaves the actual war commanding to the Lord Commanders of each segmentum. Then there's the High Admiral of the Imperial Navy, cause fair enough, the Holy Syndod of Terra, which is similar to the Ecclesiarch permanent role, but due to a very naughty boy called Georges Vandai nearly destroying the Imperium while he was a High Lord, the Holy Synod now acts as an oversight council to make sure that doesn't happen again. Then there is the Abba Centaurum of the Adeptus Sororitas, basically the leader of the Sisters of Battle. After that is the Captain General of the Adeptus Custodes, who only doesn't hold a permanent seat because they can't be fucked dealing with all the bullshit of politics. After that we have the Chancellor of the Estate Imperium, which to be honest I don't really know what they do, but it seems really fucking boring the Speaker of the Chartist Captains, basically the Lord of Trade, and the Lord Constable of the Synopticon, which is like a mini Inquisition that focuses on the surveillance of the Imperium for internal threats. As you can see, not all these roles are like the others, with the obviously most important ones holding these High Lord spots. There has been three times in history where a High Lord got way too big for their boots and tried to take full control. The first was the Beheading, where the Imperium had been shown as the weak thing it truly was during the War of the Beast. After the Heresy, there was a time of peace which made the Imperium weak. They barely defeated the massive orc invasion with the Space Marine Commander Thane telling the Master of Assassins, whom he liked and trusted, to take charge in rebuilding the Imperium while Thane would go out and rebuild the Space Marine chapters and ensure that the Imperium would never get caught with their pants down again. This Master of Assassins, Van Gorich, was initially great. He was effective and did his duty, but he saw how useless and corrupt the High Lords actually were as their own selfish desires slowed down the rebuilding efforts. Hence in a single day, the day of the beheading, he had 10 of the High Lords assassinated with their replacements being puppets loyal to him. Thane heard about this but was like, fair enough, and carried on. Van Goritz would rebuild Terra and the Imperium, but over the decades he got really paranoid and began becoming a ruthless tyrant, who performed mass executions of innocents due to his own paranoia. Thane would not tolerate this, hence returned to Terra and fought against Van Goric and his assassins. Hundreds of veteran space marines died, but eventually Van Goric was killed, leaving a massive power vacuum that threatened to ruin the Imperium. It took a few years and a large garrison of space marines on Terra to restore order, however eventually it got sorted. The next incident was a few thousand years later when that Dick, Georges Vandier, was elected as the next master of the administratum and then schemed and murdered his way to become the next ecclesiarch as well. This made him exceedingly powerful as he was both the soul and the brain of the Imperium. The conditions for his ascension were due to the weakness of the High Lords. 
afterwards, as it had been thousands of years since the beheading. To protect himself, Georges then founded the Brides of the Emperor, who would later become the Sisters of Battle, a warrior order of fanatical nuns who were 100% loyal to the Emperor, hence 100% easy to manipulate. Georges also manipulated them into having sex with him all the time, as he claimed it was the will of the Emperor. Once again, Van Dyer's paranoia would lead to insanity, as he would begin mass purges of imagined enemies, creating the Reign of Blood. Through the efforts of a cool dude named Sebastian Thor, a bunch of space marines, the Mechanicus, and the Adeptus Custodes, Van Dyer was eventually killed by the very Sisters of Battle who he founded, after the Custodes brought their leader to the Emperor for a chat. However, the damage was done. The Imperium would be in turmoil for centuries after Van Dyer's death. The final incident with the High Lords is when Gilliman returned and basically replaced most of the High Lords and purged a shitload of corrupt politicians and bureaucrats. The D-ranked High Lords tried to stage a coup and were even able to leverage the Minotaur Space Marine chapter. However, the Master of Assassins wanted to see how Gilliman's rule would play out. Hence, he assassinated the Usurpers and the Minotaurs were ordered to stand down after engaging in a fight with the Custodes. The funniest part is that G-Man knew of the attempted coup, who would be involved and when they would strike, but he saw them as so pathetic that it wasn't even worth his direct intervention. All that politicking is a bit of a joke when it goes up against the beast like G-Man. As it currently stands, the High Lords we know of is Gilliman as the Imperial Regent, Trajan Valoris as the Captain General of the Custodes, Fadix as the Master of Assassins, Morven Val as the leader of the Sisters of Battle, and Ode Odia Raskin as the Fabricated General. There are a few other names, but since they aren't important characters and you'll forget their names after this video ends, what's the point in wasting time and butchering their name pronunciation? As a side note, the Grand Provost Marshal, the Lord Commander of the Imperial Army, and the High Admiral were all killed during their attempted coup against Gilliman. Fucking morons. In the current lore, the High Lords, other than the Captain General of the Custodes, now act under Gilliman, more so his Council of Advisors and those he delegates to rather than equals. Thus, they are now more effective than ever, unified in purpose, which is why the Indominus Crusade was such a success. The Imperium has had the means of total victory for thousands of years. They just had such short-sighted, selfish and competent politicians in charge. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then pick up some magical Christmas merch. Stock is limited, so don't miss out. Hit the subscribe button and hit the real subscribe button for more high content. Join the Discord for more memes and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.